Hello everybody and welcome to another video. I am so sorry for this extremely long hiatus, but I promise I'll be posting a lot more videos during the summer, so stay tuned. I am amazingly anatomical and I'm so excited to make videos on the human body and science in general. Today we're going to talk about the mummies and skeletons you see in movies. In a more scientific sense, we're going to explore the anatomy of the skeletal system and diseases and disorders that can result from problems in the skeletal system, and as usual, all from the high school's perspective. Let's dive in! The anatomy of the skeletal system. Well, before we go into the skeletal system, what is the purpose of our inner skeletons? For starters, without the skeletal system, humans would not look like humans. What I mean by that is, the skeletal system is what gives us our shape and a stereotypical human look. Additionally, the skeletal system allows us to have movement and have the ability to stand up in the first place. The bones in the system also help produce red and white blood cells by storing bone marrow, shielding our brain, heart, lungs, and spine, and storing minerals like calcium. That is why drinking milk during your adolescence is vital for bone strength and protection. Now that that is settled, let's move on to what the skeletal system consists of. The primary part of the skeletal system is, well, you probably guessed it, bones. Our bones help form our skeletons and there are approximately 206 bones in a fully developed adult skeleton. Our bones have three different layers. The periosteum, which is the membrane that covers the outside of your bone. The compact slash cortical bone, which is the white, smooth, but hard part of your bone and the spongy slash cancellous bone, is, which is the innermost softest part of your bone. It, ha it also has pores that allow marrow to be stored. In addition to the bones, our skeletal system contains cartilage, joints, ligaments, and tendons. Cartilage is a smooth and flexible substance, kind of like the consistency of plastic, and it is what allows bone connection points to be covered. This allows the bones to move without a force of friction acting on it, which enables us to move as efficiently as we do. Joints are, well, joints. It's in the name. They allow two or more bones to connect in our body. However, there are three types of joints that are important to learn about. Immovable joints, or known as synarthrosis, function literally like their name. Bones would not move at all with these joints. The joints between the first pair of ribs and sternum are immovable joints. Partly movable joints, aka amphiarthrosis, allow for some range of movement between the bones. Some joints in our rib cage are amphiarthrosis. Lastly, movable joints allow for an extended and wide, wide range of motion. We see this in our shoulders, elbows, and knees. Some common movable joints are ball and socket joints, hinge joints, gliding joints, and pivot joints. Moving on, ligaments are bands and strings of very strong connective tissue that keep bones in place. And lastly, tendons are bands of tissue that are responsible for connecting the ends of muscle to our bones. Now that we have finished reviewing the anatomy of the skeletal system, let's move on to the disorders in the skeletal system. Just like any other system, there are problems that are very serious in the skeletal system. A lot of it happens due to us getting injured and hurt every day. But age also plays a huge factor in skeletal system injuries. Just like they say, father time is undefeated. Let's move on to our first condition, arthritis. The most common condition that you guys probably have heard of is arthritis, like I just said. Arthritis is when joints sadly wear down and have symptoms such as joint stiffness and severe pain. Factors such as age, injuries, and other medical conditions play a role in developing arthritis. Additionally, Lyme disease is known to lead to arthritis, but I will not be going into that right now. Let me, guys, let me know if you guys want a video on Lyme disease. Osteoporosis. This is when bones are not receiving enough calcium and they become super fragile and brittle. Osteoporosis fractures are most common in the hip, spine, and wrist. Usually, bones have a process to replace old bone tissue. However, osteoporosis results in this process not keeping up with the normal pace in which it happens. Additionally, most people don't know they have osteoporosis until a bone fracture happens. As of right now, osteoporosis doesn't have a cure, but bone exercises, a healthy diet, and appropriate medications help. Osteosarcoma Osteosarcoma is when a cancer forms in the bones, and this can lead to the bones getting weak and even breaking. The most common symptoms are pain, swelling, 
decreased movement, and limping. It is most common in longer bones, such as the bones in our arms and legs, but it can occur in any bone in our skeletal system. MRI tests, PET scans, x-rays, and blood tests can identify osteosarcoma. Fractures. Fractures are when bones undergo a tremendous amount of stress and break. This can be due to diseases, tumors, trauma, and more. Sprains and tears. This is when connective tissue can tear and overexpand as a result of diseases, trauma, and age. There are a lot more diseases and conditions in the skeletal system, but those are the main ones that are the most common in our everyday lives. Now I'm going to be talking about what happens when you break a bone. While there are conditions such as osteoporosis and osteosarcoma, I want to explain something that happens. What happens when you break a bone just normally? Well, for starters, there are three types of fractures. There's the stress factor, fracture, which overpressure or continuous strain can cause cracks in your bones. There are also stable or closed fractures, where the ends of two or more broken bones line up, and hence it gives it a closed look. The last one is an open or compound fracture, and in this fracture, the bone that is broken breaks your skin, breaks through your skin, to be more precise. The most common way for identifying broken bones are x-rays. There, you will know what type of fracture you have and how long it will take to fully heal. This time frame can be as short as three weeks to as long as a couple of months. Generally, fractures need casts so the bone doesn't move and there is an outside bracing to protect your bones. Lastly, I'm going to end the video with steps you can do to keep your skeletal system healthy. First, I'm going to make a public announcement, if you will. A disclaimer, I am not a professional by any means, and this is only for educational purposes. You should never try to self-diagnose serious conditions or try to be your own doctor. Anyway, in order to keep your skeletal system healthy, first, get vitamin D and calcium in your body. This can be through nuts like almonds and dairy like milk and yogurt. Keep your bones strong. Next, drink a lot of water because this keeps your tissue healthy and also exercise as much as possible in order to improve your bone and joint strength. Make sure to maintain your weight or keep a healthy weight in order to prevent extra pressure on bones, joints, cartilage, and more. Lastly, I want to stress, be careful. Be cautious when playing sports or something as simple as walking up and down stairs. Don't make mistakes by not paying attention to where you are going. And that's the end of the video. I know that was a lot of information, but if you're interested in learning about anything else, please let me know in the comments below. Also, if you can, please leave a like and subscribe and check out my previous videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.